Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better deals next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Al Simmons, also known as Spawn, from the comics and the cartoons Spawn and Mortal Kombat 11, but he's never been in a movie, because if I acknowledge that movie, I'm gonna stop making this video. I watched it for this video's research, and it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. The video's a big hit though, the deal paid off. Better than I can say for Al. I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to die and then come back. Next, we're sort of chained to our job, so let's use those chains to our advantage. Finally, we need some spooky outfits that we can summon at will, even if they upset Edna Mode. For stats, we're gonna be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that you're scary. Charisma will be number one. Keith David's voice alone is worth 20. The fact that you also look like an eight foot tall California raisin that got microwaved to life just adds to the intimidation factor. Strength next, you've got some serious muscles under all that necroplasmic armor. Dexterity after that, guns mean aim, and you were good at guns even before you were magically able to conjure them. Follow that up with constitution, you died once, I'm guessing you don't want to do it again. Intelligence is a bit low, you're a fairly smart guy, we just don't need it and we'll dump wisdom. You don't sign up to work with Malbulgia if you're good at insight checks. Al is a human, or more accurately was a human, so we'll make a revenant human. You get two free points for your dexterity and charisma, and plus one to your constitution because you died. You have a relentless nature, meaning that you recover 1 HP at the start of each turn, you're below half health. You come back to life 24 hours after you die until you complete your goal, and you know what direction your goal is in because a horrible clown combination of Jar Jar Binks and Fat Bastard is telling you where to go. Modify the soldier background for athletics and stealth proficiency, not because you aren't intimidating, but just because warlocks can't get stealth proficiency, and you were an assassin that is now basically made of shadows. We're starting off as a warlock, you made a deal that brought you back to life and gave Gave you superpowers that's warlock stuff warlocks get two skills from the warlock list like arcana and intimidation because you're magically horrifying like an undead lucky charm even though you're undead we'll make you a fiend lock because you signed up with the devil not a lich fiend locks get dark one's blessing giving you temporary hp equal to your warlock level plus your charisma modifier when you drop someone to zero hp this is a way to get that regeneration factor on for your cantrips eldritch blast is what we're going to use for your chains it's a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 force damage and it's going to be much better later. Create Bonfire creates a 5 foot cube of fire that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, dealing 1d8 fire damage to those that fail for a little fiery boom. You could also use it in a trash can, you hang out in a lot of alleyways. For a fiery boom to punish people who hit you, Hellish Rebuke forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures that deal damage to you, dealing 2d10 fire damage to those that fail for some big angry flames. Burning Hands lets you make a big fire on your turn for a 15 foot cone of fire damage, 3d6 fire damage specifically to those that fail, have as much to those that succeed. That's only because you signed up with the big scary fireman though, other warlocks don't get that. Don't look at Hexblade, I promise it doesn't get anything cool. Second level warlocks get invocations, a perk package from your new boss. Like Agonizing Glass to let you add your charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blast attacks, which will be completely awesome at the end of this once you're shooting four beams per round. You'll have more chains than wallets in the 90s. Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor at will, giving you AC equal to 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. I think you wear a cape and every once in a while a stocking hat when you want to be incognito. That really throws people off. Maybe I should have given you disguise self. Just kidding, you're terrifying. That's why I like the spell Cause Fear, which was a wisdom saving throw on a creature, frightening them for up to a minute if they fail, depending on your concentration. You've got some piercing green eyes, it can be hard to focus when you're around. Third level warlocks get a Pact Boon, another gift from your boss to help you kill things for him. Pact to the Blade lets you conjure a magical melee weapon as an action. Pick whatever you want, you could probably kill people with a bubblegum wrapper. Oh, sorry, that's a ranged weapon, you can't use that. For second level spells, Hold Person lets you use your chains to hold a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw, paralyzing them for up to a minute depending on your concentration if they fail. That means critical hits with your packed weapons for some serious bad guy boo-boos. Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement. Charisma should be your top priority. Those chains are going to be your main source of damage. For this level spell, Shadow Blade lets you summon another magical weapon. This one deals 2d8 psychic damage. Its finesse can be thrown and has advantage on attacks in dim or dark light. You can use it like any other weapon for a minute depending on your concentration. The dim dark light thing, yeah, that's kind of your move. You don't really fight people during the day. Fifth level warlocks get another invocation. Thirsting Blade lets you make two attacks instead of one with your packed weapon. So this won't work for Shadow Blade since that isn't a packed weapon, but it could be like 
any other melee weapon. For this level spell, fly lets you fly 60 feet per round for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. I thought about grabbing gaseous form because the flavor is cool and fits well, but uh, it's really hard to use, and spawn is super duper strong, so I don't want weak stuff in here. Sixth level fiends get Dark One's own luck, letting you add a 1d10 to an ability check or saving throw once per short rest, helping you be super duper strong and better than everyone at everything. For this level spell, fireball from the fiend list will let you use a rocket launcher, dealing 8d6 fire damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw in a 20 foot radius sphere, half as much to those that succeed. It's kind of messed up that you're doing this to people after you went through it yourself, but uh, it's fine, just do it. Seventh level warlocks can learn fourth level spells like Shadow of Moil. It's basically the spawn spell. This is gonna wreath you in shadows that turn dim light to dark light and bright light to dim light, heavily obscuring you inside. While you've got this up, you've got resistance to radiant damage and deal 2d8 necrotic damage to creatures that deal damage to you within 10 feet of you. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration. It's just reactive though. It doesn't require your reaction, which means that you can use this and Hellish Rebuke at the same time to completely wreck people dumb enough to hit spawn. For this level's invocation, Grasp of Hadar lets you pull a creature 10 feet closer to you once per round with your Eldritch Blast attacks so that your chains can actually pull people in. Eighth level warlocks get another ability score improvement, capping off your charisma modifier will make sure you're dealing as much damage as possible with your chains, and will also add to your weapon damage later. For this level's spell, Dimension Door lets you teleport 500 feet as an action, and even bring a willing creature with you if you want to do some day saving as an anti-hero. Ninth level warlocks get fifth level spells. Hold monster is like hold person without the humanoid restriction in case some demons go rogue. You're the one who's probably going to have to take them down. You can also grab another invocation. Improved packed weapon lets you add one to the attack and damage rolls with your packed weapon, and you can conjure a short bow, long bow, light crossbow, or heavy crossbow to get some guns. Guns are in D&D, but they can't be a packed weapon. Also, I don't know if your DM's gonna put them in your campaign, so I always just go with crossbows. 10th level fiend locks get fiendish resilience to pick a type of damage you'd like to resist when you take a short rest, and you resist it until you switch it up. Silvered and magical weapons still ignore this, so pick something cooler than the standard bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing, like thunder or force. For this level spell, Enervoration lets you drain the light from someone, forcing a dexterity saving throw on them. Even if they pass, they take 2d8 necrotic damage, but they take 4d8 necrotic damage if they fail, and they take that damage every turn after that if you're holding your concentration for up to a minute. It also helps you heal yourself, giving you half the necrotic damage back in healing, pushing the bullets out of you and sealing you back up like a Ziploc bag of death. 11th level warlocks get a 6th level mystic arcanum spell slot, which is like your other spells except you can use it on a long rest instead of short rests. True seeing gives a creature true sight to see all the disguised demons for an hour as they truly are, which should help you keep the world safe from the denizens of hell that aren't as cool as you. 12th level warlocks get an ability score improvement, let's get your dexterity modifier up for better guns and finesse weapons that you conjure, not to mention making you harder to hit when you're kind of a sentient blob of inky darkness. That should be hard to hit. You can also grab another invocation. Life Drinker adds your charisma modifier and necrotic damage to the attacks you make with your packed weapons, meaning that you effectively have a capped off damage plus your dexterity modifier. That's nasty. 13th level warlocks get a 7th level arcanum spell. Plane Shift brings you and up to 8 friends to another plane of your choice, or you can make a melee spell attack against another creature, forcing a charisma saving throw on them and sending them to another plane of your choice if they fail. Send Wind to Hell? The dude definitely deserves it. 14th level fiend locks get to send people on a quicker tour of hell with Hurl Through Hell. When you hit a creature with an attack, you can send them on a 6 second roller coaster through fire and flames, causing them so much trauma that they take 10d10 psychic damage when they come back. You'd only do this once per long rest, basically making it another arcanum spell that you can only use once. 15th level warlocks get an 8th level arcanum slot. Maddening darkness creates a 60 foot radius of unfathomable darkness, forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures inside and dealing 8d8 psychic damage if they fail, half as much if they succeed. It stays dark for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration and the area is also darkness that not even dark vision can see through. So it would be nice if you had some special kind of dark vision that could see in that area, like creatures with devil sight, the invocation that we're taking at this level. That gives you 120 feet of magical dark vision. You tend to work the night shift. This should also help with that. 16th level warlocks get another ability score improvement. More dexterity is really important. That hasn't changed, even if you'll be doing more damage with your Eldritch Blast than you will with your weapons. 17th level warlocks get a 9th level arcanum spell. Foresight just turns you into an unmatched badass for 8 hours, giving you advantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws, and creatures attacking you will have disadvantage as well. Again, it's almost like you're made out of demon soup. 
18th level warlocks get our last invocation. Master of the Myriad of Forms lets you cast Alter Self at will, either shifting your appearance to look a little bit more human, aquatic adaptation to let you breathe underwater, and natural weapons to bend your body in a magical way and deal 1d6 bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage with your unarmed attacks. All of that is magical and has a plus one to attack and damage rolls. Considering your weapons are generally made out of your own necrotic essence, it makes sense that the shapeshifter stuff is pretty similar. Ninth level warlocks get our last ability score improvement. If you really want to use guns, grab the crossbow expert feat, but I'm going to recommend resilient for constitution, rounding up the score, giving you 19 extra HP at this point, and proficiency with the constitution saving throws to help you with your concentration spells. Our capstone is Eldritch Master, letting you spend a minute to beg your patron for some more spell slots, getting all of your spended spell slots back. You can only do this once per long rest, but it effectively doubles your fifth level spell slots if you can take a minute off. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, your invocations like Armor of Shadows, Agonizing Blast, and Devil Sight just make you better than everyone else and very consistent. Speaking of consistency, Foresight gives you advantage on everything, helping you keep your edgelord aesthetic from being shattered by a failed check or attack. Finally, thanks to Eldritch Blast, you've got some really consistent damage, and you can make that really, really high damage with a hold person spell, 8d10 plus 40 in a single round, to be specific. For weaknesses, your wisdom is bad, meaning that you could get hit with fear, paralyzation, or charming pretty easily. You've also got way too many concentration spells for a warlock. Picking and choosing is rough stuff when you have that few spell slots. Finally, since you've got Eldritch Blast, the packed weapon is just not really worth investing in. Unless you think that summoning a machine gun from the pits of hell is cool, which it is, get edgy, fly around, and unleash all the powers of hell. Just think twice about the deals you make. It would be kind of awkward if you sold your soul twice. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making a new video every day this month. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.